After playing around with CNC machines for several years, I've always kept an eye on 3D printers. Um, the technology is kind of cool, and I've got friends that are very, very into it. So when the price for these kits came down low enough, I went ahead and took, took the plunge. The first 3D printer that I've had or that I bought was this mono price unit, and this was on sale for $2.99, fully assembled and ready to go. And I had this for a few weeks to a month, and it was working great, but it was pretty limited by the size of the bed. So after looking around online, this ANET A8 in kit form was advertised for about $178 with free shipping. So gave it a try. Came in a box with lots of parts. There's lots of videos on YouTube for the assembly, so I didn't do a video for that. Took a few days uh, in the evening to put it together and then finished it up on the weekend. The parts, the blue parts here that came with the kit had problems. So it was interesting. I went to Thingiverse and printed out replacement ones on here. And then with my blue PLA, printed replacement parts for the machine here. So I've got several projects underway. One of them being a clock. And this clock is from Ryan Law. All the STL files come as a unit. And you just print these out. I'm waiting for a few extra pieces to put this together. While printing the parts for this clock, I was checking out some different kinds of filament. And this is a wood filament. It's got wood fibers inside the plastic. So it extrudes in a wood color. And you can sand it, you can stain it, and do different things with it like you would with regular wood. And it came out really well. By changing the temperature on the extruder, you can change the properties of the wood. You can make it darker or lighter and uh, give it some neat effects. So when I put this together, I may throw a couple of these wood printed pieces in there as well. It's pretty cool when printing this stuff that you can do threaded things as well. This printed out in two pieces, and this is the weight for the clock. So we'll load that up with some, some birdshot or some nails. The screws down, a string goes through there, and that'll drive the clock. This one looks pretty cool, so we're going to give this a try today. I believe this was done in ABS with some acetone smoothing, that would be my guess. And what we're going to do is print this in PLA. I've got some blue filament that we'll use for this. So we'll download this. I think it'll open up as a mesh mixer file. And then we'll transfer that over to Craftware for the slicing. So we've got our binary shape that we just downloaded. And we're going to throw this over into Craftware. You can just drag that over and set it up in here. We can play with the shape once we're in Craftware. Any slicing program will let you change change the shape and the parameters. And then once we've got this set up, we'll go to Slice. And here's where all the settings can be. I keep my bed a little bit cool at 35, the extruder temperature at 200, and there's all kinds of options here that you can set. We got a slice, then there's our shape. Up here this tells us how long it'll take. This is about three hours. How much filament will be needed for PLA or ABS. We'll save this to a micro SD card and run it over to the printer. To transfer my files I just use a USB converter. We've got our little micro SD card right here. And then for this ANET A8, it just slides into the slot right in the top. We can plug it in live with some different programs, but I'm just using the SD card for now. Since this is a very bottom dollar basic printer, basically when it's plugged in, it's on. So we've got this on a power strip. And we come to life here. We're going to go down to print file. And I've got a lot of files on here. It should be the very last one. 
Here's our binary shape. Once that's hit, the machine will home itself. And I just turned this on so everything is pretty cold. We've got our bed temperature on the right and our extruder temperature on the left. And right now everything is cold. The bed will start heating up first. We're aiming for our 35 that was shown on the screen in Craftware. Once that's reached temperature, then we'll start heating up the extruder. As far as what I use for the release material, I've tried the blue tape, the blue painter's tape, glue, masking tape, lots of different things, and they all work not that well. Some are better than others. So this was ordered from Print Z, and this just clips on here. You can take the whole thing off, and it's flexible. It's got a good release, so there's no scraping required, and basically the prints just pop right off. So we're heating up right now. We're almost up to 35. So we're just about there. 32. And then we'll switch over to the extruder temp. So almost to 35. And then as soon as that hit 35, we popped up to 200 for our goal for the extruder, and now we're warming up there. So we've reached temperature, our 35 for the bed, which is pretty cool, but with PLA you really don't need any heat for the bed. And then for the extruder, about 200. And we've started our shape, that binary vase design. This will take about three hours. It's a very windy day here. I hope the power doesn't blip or go out. If it does, then the print will have to be redone. The machine in general is pretty quiet. It's a whole lot more quiet than the CNC machine. So we'll just let this roll. There's the finished planter. It came out really well, very clean, it took longer than Crafter estimated to print. The software said it would take about three hours and it took closer to six, but the lines are really, really pretty on here. And the nice thing about this platform is you just flex it a little bit and it pops right off. It's kind of cool we've got some tunnels in there, so we put a little dirt, not sure what plant would look best in that but fun little project. Very good resolution on this very inexpensive 3D printer. Cool stuff. Thanks very much for taking a look.